Well, hello again, everybody, and welcome back to the channel. My name is Brad, and today is the first Friday in February. So we're continuing our coverage and our series on DOT rules, regulations, things that you might want to know, things that you might need. And in today's series, we're going to cover what might happen should you get pulled over and get an inspection. The things that you need, the things that you want to have, and all the things from what they're going to check and what things are going to look like. Uh, this isn't good. We got a little problem here. I'll be right back. Well, that was a close one. Got through it squeaky clean. <laughs> All joking aside, let's get back to the yard and talk about what happens when that happens. All right, so at this point in the video series, we have already hashed through and identified whether or not we are operating a commercial motor vehicle. We know the differences between what a commercial motor vehicle is and what a commercial driver's license is. Two different things as we've discussed, and if you don't know what we're talking about or you're not sure of the difference between that 10,000 pound number and that 26,000 pound number, then I encourage you to go back and watch the other videos in this series, which I will link here at the top of your screen. So. Now we're in a situation where we're operating a commercial motor vehicle, we're out on the highway, and eventually we get pulled into that scale house or we get pulled over on the side of the road, and now we are encountering, encountering our first uh, commercial vehicle inspection. And a lot of you don't know what that entails, a lot of you have a lot of questions about what that entails, but before we get started with what we're gonna talk about, let me just let you know that Unlike other uh, cars on the road, you don't need to commit a violation or break a law before you, a police officer does not need probable cause to pull you over. If you are in a commercial vehicle, they can do what's called a random stop, a random safety inspection. They can pull you over for absolutely no reason with the sole intention of doing a safety inspection on you and the vehicle. So what we're going to talk about today is what's called a level two walk around inspection. There are multiple le levels of inspections from a level one, which is a full blown inspection where they get on a creeper or they get in a pit and they get underneath the truck and they check everything top to bottom and front to back. We are going to talk today about a level two inspection, which is a walk around. And the reason that I'm choosing to focus on this type of inspection is because it's the most common. Uh, it accounts for about 45% of the inspections done annually on commercial motor vehicles and it will cover pretty much everything except some components underneath the vehicle. So we're going to start at the front, we're going to work our way around systematically and methodically and I'm going to point out some things that you should know. Now I'm not going to cover every single little detail because this video would be forever long but I'm going to cover the basics and I'm going to cover the main things that you need to know that you can look at with no training at all and to be able to identify things that might be in question with your vehicle. So let's uh, start at the front and we'll talk about what's going to happen when that officer approaches you for the very first time. So one of the first things that's going to happen when that officer approaches your driver's door is he's going to make some observations. He's going to check and see if you're wearing your seat belt. Uh, he or she is going to check to see uh, what your composure looks like. Uh, try to notice if he can see any signs of alcohol or drug usage, odors, things of that nature. He's going to ask you for your driver's license. He's going to ask you for your registration card. Your medical card he may ask you for. Now in most states, your medical card is part of your driver's license now, uh, but it's still good to carry that with you, and if you have it, it's good just to give it to him. Um, he may also ask you for your any timesheets or logbooks that you might have. Now us in the firewood business and most people that are going to be watching this channel in this video are not going to have to be worried about log books because we're not traveling interstate, we're not traveling across the country and driving hours upon hours at a time. So 
Those are the documents that they're going to request right off the bat. And that's the first part of this inspection is the driver credentials. It's going to make sure your license is valid, make sure you have the proper class license, make sure your license is not expired. Uh, check your registration card. Make sure that the registration is correct for the tag that's displayed on the vehicle. Check the weight, the weight rating of your registration and also check to make sure that there's no uh, expiration or flags on the vehicle. Uh, he'll check your medical card to make sure it's valid and not expired. If you have a restriction on your medical card such as corrective lenses, hearing aids, anything like that, uh, they'll identify that at this time as well. So once the driver credentials has been inspected and everything's good to go there, uh, then he'll move on to the walk around of the inspection which will start at the left front corner of the truck. So beginning at the left front of the truck, you may have a light check at this point while we're in the, in the front. They'll have you turn on all your lights. They're going to check your headlights, your high beams, your four-way flashers, your left turn signal, your right turn signal. All of your clearance lamps, which are on the corners, and your three ID lamps, which are in the middle. They're going to check any marker lights you might have to make sure that's all functional. And they may, at this point, just go ahead while the lights are on and walk to the back and have you go through your lights, left turn signal, right turn signal, uh, brake lights, and just make sure everything is good there. We'll come back to the front and we're just going to start methodically working down the vehicle. He's going to check tires. Now tires are something that might seem obvious, but tires are something that they will be checking because there's more things than just looking to make sure they're not obviously flat. First thing is tread depth. Now on steering axle tires, the minimum tread depth is required at least 430 seconds. So this, this here is a uh, tread depth gauge. You simply set it on top of the tire, push the top of it down into the groove of the tread, and it will tell you that this tire has about 930 seconds of tread on it. So we've got more than 430 seconds and we are in good shape. They're going to check your lug nuts. Make sure that there's no signs of loose lug nuts. They're going to check the tires for any steel belts or ply material that might be showing. They're going to check for any bulges, bubbles, cuts, anything that might suggest that the tire is not in safe operating condition and then they will begin moving down the vehicle. Air pressure in your tires is another thing to keep in mind uh, to make sure you're carrying the proper air pressure. If you're running low air pressure in your tires, that generates heat, that can cause a blowout, and obviously is a dangerous situation. So most inspectors will be able to look at your tire and tell if it's low or if it looks low and if there's any question, they will put an air gauge on it and just check your tire pressure. Now a flat tire will put your vehicle out of service and you won't be able to move it until you get that tire fixed. But don't confuse a flat tire with a low tire because just because the tire is not completely flat does not mean it's not classified as a flat. If your tire calls for 80 pound of pressure and it's below 50 percent, meaning below 40 pound, you may still have 38 pound of air pressure in that tire, but according to the rules, it's flat. Part of this inspection is frame components, suspension components, brake hoses, brake lines. So while we're in the front, we're going to check all that. Make sure we don't see any hydraulic fluid leaking from the hoses. If it's got air brakes, we're going to make sure the air lines are not leaking or chafing or have uh, damage done to them. Uh, we'll walk down the side, make sure the mirrors are in good condition. Make sure the frame, we don't see any cracks or um, broken parts the leaf springs here underneath the truck. Make sure there's no cracked leaf springs. Walking down the side, we'll check the rear tires. Now the rear tires are a little bit different than the steering axle tires, and you only need to have 230 seconds of tread. And here we've got about 630 seconds. Again, checking the wheels, checking the lug nuts, making sure there's no cracks or loose lug nuts and again checking the tires 
for any steel belts that might be showing or damage. As we continue walking around the truck, uh, dump trucks in particular are known for having loose debris laying on the rear of the tailgate, laying on the coal chute, or uh, you know just building up from dumping material. So they will check to make sure you don't have any loose falling material coming from the back of the truck. They're going to check your lights once again while they're back here, your mud flaps, um, and just the overall condition of the truck. We'll go back up the other side and it's kind of the same situation in reverse order. Coming up the passenger side, tires, lights, suspension components, frame components, anything loose, cracked, broken, hanging, dangling. We want to make sure that all that stuff is good to go. Another thing that I failed to mention when you first get stopped is they're going to look for that number right there on the side of your truck. Your company name and your DOT number should be displayed uh, in a color that is contrasting to the color of the vehicle so that it's easily re readable and visible from at least 50 feet away. So there's a few other things that they're going to check such as safety equipment which we'll go over here in a second. They're going to check your horn your windshield wipers, including your windshield wiper washer to make sure you have fluid in there to keep your windshield clean. And let's talk about what safety equipment you need right now. Now the two major safety components that they're going to be looking for to check and make sure they are in good condition and good working order, one is the fire extinguisher. You are required to have a fire extinguisher with you in the vehicle. The fire extinguisher should be mounted securely either behind the seat to the floor, alongside the seat, somewhere where it cannot roll around and potentially have an accidental discharge in the vehicle which would obviously create a safety issue while you're driving. Your fire extinguisher should have a gauge on it so that it can be checked to make sure it has the proper pressure um, and that it's ready to go. The other thing that they're going to ask for is three reflective triangles or three uh, reflective uh, devices to put along the rear of your vehicle should you break down on the side of the road. You're required to have three of them. They come in, in kits of three, so it's really easy to do. I just shove these behind the seat of the truck and they're always with me. Um, so those are the three or the two safety equipment things that you definitely need to make sure you have. And I should just add that we're talking about a level two inspection, so nobody's going underneath your truck at this point. However, if during the course of the walk around level two inspection, they decide, hey, I'm discovering a lot of problems here. I see a lot of things I don't like. Uh, it's obvious this person is not keeping up with the maintenance of the vehicle. We're gonna switch this to a level one and they can obviously take it further. So keep your stuff clean, keep it looking good. If it's a dirty looking truck, uh, chances are higher that they're going to look at you a little harder if you keep your stuff clean and it looks like you have some pride in what you're doing that does carry a little bit of weight with how hard you're going to be looked at. Like I said these are the basics there's several other things that could be checked during the course of a walk around inspection especially if you're operating a vehicle with air brakes. Uh, there's an air brake inspection that has to be done where they will have you pump your brake pedal down to remove air pressure from your system to make sure that you have a low air warning device such as a light or a buzzer. It doesn't have to be both but you have to have either one or the other. When you get below 60 psi that light or buzzer should be coming on in that area to notify you that you're losing air pressure and you may have a leak, a blown brake chamber or something like that. With hydraulic brakes such as the brake system on this truck they will check to make sure your booster is working uh, should you lose power to the truck and they will also have you set your emergency brake either put the truck in gear or let out slightly on the clutch to make sure that your parking brake is actually holding. So a few other things there just to touch base on this is a very brief walk around inspection this will normally take about 10 to 12 minutes to conduct on the side of the road uh, but it does cover a lot of safety components steering mechanisms, frame, suspension, brakes, 
safety equipment, lights, tires. Lights, tires, and brakes are the three most common uh, inspection violations across the country. So if you can keep your eye on those three things, you'll be way ahead of the game. That is gonna be it for today. If you are just finding the channel and you're just checking this out, uh, this is a special series that we've been doing over the past uh, couple months now, I guess. The first Friday of the month, we are concentrating on this stuff for those of you who have all kinds of questions. And if there's something that you would like to hear me cover or see me cover, drop it down in the comments and I'll do my best to try to do that on next month's first Friday's video. But every Wednesday morning at 7 a.m. we are 100% firewood and firewood related things. So come back and check us if you're brand new here. Check out some of the other videos. And until next Wednesday, I hope you all have a great week and we'll see you then.